Hello, and welcome to this Design Studio tutorial for our new feature, Design Effects. Let's jump right in and look at this new effect. As you can see, it's marked here as Beta, and we can turn it on. And the first effect we're going to look at is the Layer Blur. I have this blur on this text layer, and you can see that I can turn the blur value up, and it's going to affect that whole layer. Now, if we look underneath at the rectangle, what we're going to do is just drag that rectangle down so it's the same color as the background, We'll add an effect, and now we'll look at this drop shadow. So as you can see, we have all the properties like blur, spread, the color, and the offsets. And we can tweak these offset values until we see that shadow nice and clearly. And then we can play with the blur, bring that color up, make it a bit darker so that we can see the shadow. And then if we want to create a new effect, we can just click here. At this time, we can essentially invert that shadow, make the values the same as the other one, and then change the color to look a white kind of color, and get this kind of neuomorphic style effect very easily. And that's um, the basics of layer blur and drop shadows. Let's take a look at the other shadow types that we have available in design effects. So we have the same setup, only this time we have a gradient for the rectangle background. And we're going to make something a little bit more skewomorphic. So we'll add an effect to our uh, rectangle layer. And you can see that we've got this drop shadow by default. We'll again change the offset, bring it out a bit, blur it up a bit, and darken it up a bit, bit to give it that sense of depth. And now what we'll do is we'll add a new effect shadow, and this time we'll select the inner shadow. Now this in now this, in contrast to the drop shadow, is going to go inwards inside our shape. So we'll change the offsets again, and let's make it a bit brighter so that we can really see it. And there we see in the top and left inner side of the rectangle. And we can tweak the blur and the color values until it looks a little bit like a sort of highlight where the light's hitting the, the beveled edge of this uh, shape. And then we can add another inner shadow. We'll use this one on the bottom and right inside corner as well to create again this kind of beveled shadow. We'll make that darker and just bring it back until it, until it looks right. And again, tweak the blur a little bit. These can also be dragged to be reordered, which will set one shadow on top of the next one if you want to change the stacking of those shadows. And there you can see that effect. We can also do this to the text layer too. So why don't we add a, another effect here? Again, we'll bring this layer blur up, this global blur. And in the dot drop shadow itself, we'll make that a slightly darker with a very small offset and a little bit of blur just to get that slightly 3D feeling on the text as well. And there you go, a very simple skeuomorphic effect using the new effects in Design Studio. Okay, and the last of the effect settings inside the new effects component is background blur. So for this, we've created a rectangle with a gradient, and we've put a lot of alpha and transparency inside that gradient. And here you can see when we have the effect, we have a background blur, but we have to provide it with a target. Now, we can't use the background in Cute Quick, so we have to create our own background to use as the target, which we've called fake root here. And that has a gradient, and it has a child ellipse so that it's seen both together. This way, when we select that fake root and increase the blur value for our background blur, you can see that everything behind our transparent rectangle is being blurred out. And we can move that around. And there you see it blurring the edges of that uh, circle, of that ellipse, into the gradient background behind it. And now we could also add some more inner shadows to this 
rectangle to create a little bit more of these sort of highlighty, specular, glassy effects. So we can really play with the shadow values here. to get that kind of glassy look to our element. Here we go, bring in some, some colors, play a little bit with the spread, and there we go, a background blur glass effect look very easily with the design effects as well. Okay, now I just want to show how this can work with things like animations and states. So here we have a timeline. We create a keyframe for one of the offset values. Let's increase that offset value, create another keyframe. Now, as we scrub through the playhead, we see that this effect is animated because it's all native QML properties. So we can test that here in the 2D view in the timeline. We can also change our animation settings so that it's ping pong and continuous and then run it in the live preview. And then we see our effect animation. Let's just repeat that with one more property. Let's maybe choose the color. So we can give that drop shadow a, a color, create a keyframe for it, scrub to the end, choose another color, create another keyframe, and now we have both the position and the color animated on our timeline. You can see it here in the 2D view and here in the live preview. So very simple to create animations with the new effects stack. And of course, that's very similar for states. So let's bring up the states view. We don't need this one, but we can create three new states. We'll make them red, blue, and green. Make the red the default here. And then we can simply change that shadow color in our state to create a property change. And repeat that for the third state. And here you see very simply we have the same shadow with different colors in different states. Again, showing the dynamic QML properties of the new effects item. Now, obviously, you can build these in Design Studio, but you can also build them in Figma and export them via the Figma bridge. And we've created a Figma demo file, which showcases a lot of different use cases for these type of effects. So you can see here, the effects we add in Figma get translated, per get translated perfectly by the bridge. We can create all kinds of different styles of neuomorphic, skeuomorphic, and this will all be exported perfectly via Figma Bridge to Qt Design Studio. Also, in this version of Qt Design Studio, we now support gradients being exported from Figma, which means that you can create your effects alongside gradients inside Figma and export the whole project into dynamic QML. We hope that you find this file interesting. There's a lot of different techniques, including some button control templates, which will auto-generate cute quick buttons while also using effects and gradients. And hopefully this gives you a good starting point to explore and to learn about how to use Figma and Design Studio along with the new effects. We've also created a demo project based on this Figma export where you can see exactly how all of these effects are exported perfectly into Design Studio so that you can study what is possible with Figma and Qt Design Studio together and look at how all these effects work in a real application. And for this project, we've also created a demo which is available inside Design Studio itself, which shows all the Figma imports plus animation, interaction, different design studies for different design styles, and the ways that you can use these effects in different types of projects. So I hope that's been useful. Have fun. Make something cool.